10 weeks of Ted, week five, episode five. And um, as you can see, I'm in a different location. I'm uh, actually in St. Catharines, Ontario. I've flown back to spend some time with my mom. And I'm out for a run in the short hills on the trails and beautiful spot to run. And, but the reason I came to this place in particular, and this is a bit freaky for me, I gotta say, when I was 18 years of age, you know, 40 years ago, we used to come out to this hill and uh, let me get in the background. So that's a pretty steep hill. And then it goes way the heck up there and it's a slow grade going up as well. And we used to do, we, they were called bull runs and we'd, because it was like a bull and we'd go back and forth, back and forth three times, take about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And we would race one another, not just run it. And it was a hard workout. And we did that on windy days you know, days we couldn't get on the water and it wasn't nearly as much traffic as it is now. We probably couldn't do it today, but uh, you know, it's 40 years later and yeah, there's just more homes and things around. So, um, so why am I here? Because of the, one of the topics, one of the themes from Ted and um, the first one before I get to the reason I'm here is, is, is about um, Jamie and his goal, right? And about this notion of the chase versus embrace. And as we talked about before, Jamie is chasing a goal, right? He is, he wants to be better than Zava. He's established a line in the sand where he will arrive and be able to determine whether or not he is better than Zava, i.e. he's achieved his goal. I'm just gonna move away from the cars. And um, however, in this episode, oops, uh, Zava has retired, <laughs> so, so, you know, the thing that Jamie was chasing has now been disrupted because Zava's left, he's gone, right? He doesn't love the sport anymore, he wants to spend time with his family and his avocado uh, trees because that's what people do, and, um, and so he's gone. And so, but it's clear that Jamie still wants to improve, he still wants to continue training with, with Roy Kent, his, one of his coaches. We don't know though, most importantly, we don't know what his new, his new motivation is, his new reason, right? What's his fuel? And that will likely be determined or revealed in the next session, but it's super important, right? Because the fuel that he's gonna utilize to achieve his, his new goal, I don't, we don't know what it is, will be integral to the success of that goal. It's either clean fuel or it's toxic fuel. It's either fuel that can sustain performance invite performance or it's fuel that will beat the crap out of you in order to garner performance and i mean i'm sure you can guess which side i'm landed on in terms of hoping which one he chooses right so super important to see where this whole goal setting uh situation goes because with the clients we work with <clears throat> it's such a determinant clients who chase invariably burn out and become frustrated with their goals and pack it in Clients who embrace the notion of getting better, the, the notion of self-improvement or potential, invariably achieve their goals and then some, okay? Second theme, second moment was Zava's gone. And so the team now is challenged to believe in themselves. When Zava was there, they were flying up the, up the standings. Zava's gone, What's, what do we do now, right? How do we... How, how do we even begin to go out on the field knowing that our star player has left us? Okay. So Ted invites them to believe. And believe has been a theme right from the first, you know, first couple of shows, first season. This notion of believe. And there's been a sign above his office and yada, yada, yada. And that sign has had some different experiences getting ripped up. And, you know, it's been a bit of a symbol for that team. However... Ted takes the sign down, rips the sign up, puts it on the table and says, look, it's, you know, we don't need a sign. There's nothing mystical about believing in yourself. And that's the point I want to raise is that like I've always, no, I not have, that's not true. I haven't always believed, but I believe that belief is a byproduct. Self-belief is a byproduct. And it's a, it's a, it's not something you can think yourself to, right? It's not, I think I believe in myself or I think I'm capable. I think I can do that. 
and then all of a sudden you arrive at a place of belief. I don't, I don't believe that's how it works. Belief is a feeling and it comes from in our, comes from deep down inside of us. It's not something we can fabricate in our mind, right? Oh, sure. I believe in myself. No, no, no. It's a feeling, right? And it's unspoken. It's, it's a sense of knowing deep down what you are capable of. So <clears throat> in this uh, invitation from Ted, it was to, to explore what they've done as a group to get to where they are. And if that's enough for them to believe in themselves, the reason I'm here is because running this, doing these bowl runs was part of a process, a cumulative process that created the feeling in us spoken or unspoken that we were capable, right? That we had trained enough. We had committed enough, persevered, sacrificed, and, uh, and engaged in the work, the process enough to result in a place where in grade 13, 1983, that crew believed that if any crew that lined up beside us, they'd better be equally as prepared or chances are uh, we were gonna win those races, right? And so sure enough, uh, we won every regatta we went into that year. Any crew that lined up before, beside us got beat. And it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't a combative nature. It was <clears throat> just this notion of, okay, let's go out and do what we're capable of because we believe in what we're capable of. And if we let that show up, it'll probably be enough. And sure enough, it was. So, so that was an important lesson for me. I didn't realize it at the time, but I realize it now, 40 years later as a coach looking back on those, those days. <laughs> You know, running hills isn't, doesn't necessarily correlate to moving a boat faster, but it's a challenging moment where you have to, you have to ask yourself, am I prepared to do what's required to race in this, in this workout? And those moments are what taught us to believe, right? It wasn't that running hills makes you a fast rower. It, it creates the moment where you have to go deep inside and go, hmm. A, do I want to? B, am I capable? And three, am I going to? And those, yeah, th that's part of high performance, right? I believe that th the high performance moments are often indicative of the preparation, right? I used to say to the athletes that I worked with, you get the performance you deserve. And that wasn't meant to be, I don't know, threatening or nasty or whatever. It was simply a fact that Performance equals um, equals preparation and all the things that have gone into it, right? And so, if you believe that and you take care of all of all of the preparation, the results should make sense, right? Often, when when the crews that I coach either lost or won, I can't think of one year that I coach where I was surprised, right? It just made sense to me. Okay, that crew that this year should have lost and they did and this year this crew that won well they should have won and they did and that's often how it works in business in leadership doesn't matter right it's not I, I used to say you know there's no hope in high performance high performance isn't something you wish for right it's something that you feel you believe you can't think yourself into uh, belief it's a it's a felt sense and you get that by accumulating experiences that build that confidence and self-belief. So it's, it's a super important theme and it's gonna be really fascinating to see how it plays out. Okay, so long one today, but uh, really, really important. And um, yeah, so we will see you uh, next week and uh, continue to take care of yourselves, continue to do all the things that generate that self-belief, that notion of discovering what you're capable of and um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye everyone.